Amen, amen. If we could stand to our feet, welcome to the house of God. So glad that you made it here today. We're going to worship our king this morning. I hope you all are excited about that, worshiping the Come king on, of kings good. and the Lord of lords because he deserves our highest praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
For those of you who do not know probably much about me, for the past three years, I have been a teacher in Chicago Public Schools. And I teach sixth and seventh graders social studies and history. And in my class, we talk a lot about religion in different parts of the world. And as my students were working on a group project, I overheard a conversation that truly blessed me. I had a student and he was sharing about his own religion and he was sharing this to two other students who happened to be Muslim. And he was telling them something very simple and it was first that he had a God who he served, who had a son, who one day decided to sacrifice his life on the cross for our sins. And in that way, that act of going on the cross saved him and he knew who he was in Christ. And I was so blessed, because it's so simple. Our Jesus came thousands of years ago. And because of that decision thousands of years ago, today, today, on this earth, we are saved, amen? So as we sing this next song, I love because it talks about what happened on the cross. I am saved today because of that. So let's go ahead and sing this song together, amen? As you are, it's time to come home out of the dark. There's no need to hide, he already sees you. Don't be afraid to show him your face, he won't turn you away, he'll never turn you away. Everybody needs, everybody needs. Everybody needs saving Everybody breaks, everybody bleeds You don't have to be ashamed Call on Jesus Say his name Just receive him in your heart And you will be saved Cause God has raised him Just believe it in your heart and you will be 
still saves us it saves us saves us there is power in the name of jesus 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 what you did on the cross still saves us saves us saves us there is power in the name of jesus 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 The Savior is a breath away. Oh, oh, oh. the Savior is a breath away. Yes, you have been so good to me. Oh, God, I can't believe how you So good to me, oh God, I can't believe how you love me, what a friend you have been. 
church, you say, oh God, I can't how you come on, sing that I'll say, what a friend you have been. Come on, believe it. So good One more time with all that you have. So good. So good. So good. I can't how you love me. What a friend you have been. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With all that I can say. That you're the only church lift your hands and let's sing
and say that and I'll still I know every promise will and there is nothing that you have cause I will yes we will come on one more, one more time even if I never I'll still praise you even after all and I'll chapter 5 verse 10 first Peter chapter 5 verse 10 if you have your physical Bibles or if you have your iPhone Bibles if you have an Android I don't know if they have a Bible available for you so you can look up on the screen Hey, listen, uh, my parents are in the house today. My mother and my father, they are here today, so we honor them. Uh, you don't want to leave at the end. Uh, my father will give us the benediction before we leave this place. So, so we want to we wanna receive that. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. Pastor Ephraim kicked us off the, this past week. We're on a new sermon series that's called uh, The Refiner. The Refiner. And... Pastor Ethan used the Amplified Virgin. I want to continue using this version, uh, the, this version as we read Scripture together. And this is what it reads. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who imparts his blessing and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making you what you ought to be. Father, I pray that you would speak, that the word would come forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want to speak to you with the topic, God himself will confirm us. God himself 
will confirm us. Suffering will make you what you ought to be. This is what Peter is telling the people of faith, that suffering would make you what you ought to be. We don't like to suffer. We don't sign up to suffer. But I do know that if I am suffering, I don't want my suffering to be wasted. Let there be something that comes from my suffering. Suffering, it is the process of becoming. This is what Peter is telling, that there is something that is coming for you to be. That Christ in you will complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Peter is sharing with the believers, with their suffering, it will produce a product that would make you what you ought to be. The suffering that, is, that Peter is referring to is the persecution for Jesus' sake. Remember, Jesus left the disciples with the great commission to preach the gospel to the ends of the world. So no one wants to suffer for doing right, sharing truth, believing in Jesus and his word. But as Christians, we have a target on our back. Our number one enemy wants to stir up trouble to discourage us from our faith. He wants to discourage you from your faith. He recognizes that the truth of Jesus is the key to unlock his lies and free people from their bondage. The enemy does not want you to be free. If you read a few verses before that, this is why Peter says to be sober-minded, to be alert. Because the devil prowls around like a roaring lion ready to destroy you. Ready to derail you. The enemy will try to do everything that he can ultimately so that you can begin to question your faith. If it's not one a temptation, then it will be another temptation. The enemy recognizes what truth can do to you and I. The power of the truth. He stirs up confusion among people and convinces them with a worldly perspective by tapping into emotions. So we lean more into our emotions than our faith. And when people lean in more in their emotions than their faith, then their emotions has a tendency or can misguide you. What I am not saying is for you to deny your emotions because I do believe that God has given us emotions to feel. It is for us to understand why or is for us to experiment why is it we're feeling this way. But it doesn't mean that the way that you're feeling is going to lead you into the truth. Which is why the Bible teaches us that we ought to walk by faith and not by sight. Our feelings, our heart is deceitful. It begins to progress in a way that can lead into an unhealthy belief system. And the worldly perspective will lead you into a place where revenge is in your own hands. Where you yourself shall be able to project how you feel. And if you feel this way, then you should have the right and the license to say what you want, to, to, to say what you feel, and to share what you think. But as people of faith, we have to walk with the fruit of the Spirit by being self-controlled and have discipline. Because ultimately what we ought to be is an image that is a reflection of Christ. When you and I were created, we were created in the image of who? Of God. So the enemy stirs up confusion. The church in itself is divided because people with the help of Satan have diluted the word of God to fit their own belief system. Persecution, rather it be physically, verbally, through social media, because that is persecution in today's age. It is a clapback. 
to make Christians look as though we are emotionless, heartless, out of touch, and insensitive. The enemy is trying to push us into a corner to feel discouraged about Jesus and faith through suffering. He wants our faith to be removed and detached because our emotions get in the way. He wants us to be more focused on our feelings and focus on Jesus. And the way that we ought to operate is putting our faith in Jesus recognizes that he will sort out our emotions. This suffering I speak of is not self-inflicted because of sin. However, God's grace and mercy is there for forgiveness and healing for those who suffered is caused by sin. This suffering is caused because you chose to follow Jesus. The decision might have felt as though it has brought more tension to your life. Following Jesus might have cost you some things. It has put some strain within your family where they will side-eye you. Don't invite you to any parties anymore. There are certain religions, maybe some of us or most of us don't face this, but there are certain religions that if you would get baptized because you are making a public declaration, you are disowned from their own family, from flesh and blood. Following Jesus is, is, it can be very challenging and much persecution and much division can take place. Friends can grow distant from you. As pastors, we, we, as pastors, my wife and I, we have experience where our calling has caused a divide because it made people feel uncomfortable. It made people feel as if they cannot be around us because of the anointing or the calling of our lives. And I just don't know if that anointing is what made them uncomfortable or they felt as if that we were too holy. But at the end of the day, it brings divide when you decide to follow Jesus. People will stop inviting you, calling you, texting you. You're no fun no more. You were the party you were the life of the party, but today they, they just don't want you to be around. There's certain settings they would will, they will invite you to, but there's others that are like, ah, just not sure if I want to hear this Jesus talk anymore. <laughs> much division, much separation happens. Sin that you care less about before, before repentance is now causing withdrawals. That even within your own self, there is a separation. There is a tension. The way that you used to think to, to now what you're learning about God, there is a tension. There is a divide that is taking place. Following Jesus is going to cost you much. It's going to challenge the way that you think. It's going to challenge the way that you feel. It's going to challenge your conduct, the way that we thought we knew things. It's going to challenge us in such ways that it's going to cause a divide because we are now transformed in, the, in a new creation. And with that responsibility, we need to have a kingdom mindset and not a worldly mindset. So truth is, is when we tend to suffer in different ways for the gospel. Suffering for the gospel of Jesus. There isn't a full explanation, at least within our understanding, for some of our suffering. But what we know is God would not waste any of our suffering. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing today, God would never waste your suffering. As long as you give all your cares to him. Peter is a man who betrayed Jesus and now speaks on suffering for Jesus. <laughs> that gives us hope for us all. A man who betrayed, who now speaks of suffering. And if you know the history of Peter, Peter ends up being crucified upside down for the cause of Christ. A man who denied Jesus for whom God redeemed is now telling the church that in your suffering, watch this now, Christ himself will complete you by confirming, strengthening, and establishing in, making you where you ought to be. That the process of your suffering is becoming. That something is coming so that you can be. That there is an added 
power, authority, substance in which God will deliver within himself that will give you the grace to keep on going. Let's, let's focus on how, while suffering Christ, will confirm you in making you what you ought to be. The King James Version Bible Dictionary, to confirm, and you can look up on the screen, to confirm is to make firm or certain, to give new assurance of truth or certainty, to put past doubt. To put past doubt. Suffering can easily cause us to doubt. Have you ever been there before? It can cause you to doubt. It can even cause you to question God's holiness. And what God wants us to do is he wants to be in us so that he can, he can make us firm, not wavering in every turn. That though we may be suffering in the season that we're in, that we don't question God's holiness. That we don't question God's goodness. We don't have all the explanations of our pain and our inflictions, but what we do know is that God is going to get us through this. Christ in us confirms us that which gives us new strength and new assurance. It is a testimony which is a reflection on what was to what is. Is there anybody in the building that has a testimony? Because a testimony is what was to what is. This is where I was when Jesus came in, here where I am today. I don't have the same mindset. I don't feel the same. There may be similar situations going on, but I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. The hope I have today, I didn't have then, but now I know that I am on a firm foundation. I told you this a few weeks ago that the wolf can try to come and, and huff and puff and bring your house down. But as long as your foundation is on the solid rock of Jesus, no matter how difficult the storms are in your life, it shall, it will not come down. But in order for your house to remain up, let me tell you what has to come down. Your pride has to come down. You can't expect for your house to remain steady when you are prideful. And what God is saying, submit yourself to me. And submitting yourself to me means that you are now humbling yourself. And you're giving your control over to God. Suffering can easily cause us to doubt, the enemy wants you to doubt so that you can eventually transition into disbelief. Christ is in us to confirm, to make us firm, to affirm who he is. Christ does not change. He is steady. Christ is consistent. He is loyal. His promises will be fulfilled in your life. But you just got to let him remain in. Many have not been able to experience the promises of God because you have not been firm. The Greek term for confirm means to be reliable and to set up. To be reliable. When God confirms us, what he is saying is, I am a reliable source. I am a strong foundation. What I'm trying to say is that in your suffering, Christ in you is the stability we need. That whenever you are stable, it will set you up for more. It will set you up so that you can become what you ought to be. There is something that is coming so that you can be what you ought to be. But you will never experience it unless you let God do what he needs to do. I'm not sure what you need more of today. But when a person is double-minded and unstable, it's difficult to get anything God has to offer. When we doubt, we are questioning what we believe as we are seeking hope in troubled times. Write this down. While suffering, God refines us by his confirmative truth. Got to go back to the basics. Anytime an athlete is losing their mechanics, 
the coach will come alongside the individual to remind them of the basics. Sometimes the things that needs to be fixed is not huge, but it is in the details. It is in the basics. As Christians, many times we seem to forget that the basics are the essentials of our faith. The basics of prayer, the basics of reading his word, the basics of fasting. We cannot get away from the essentials of what God, what got God through in his suffering. You would read in scripture that when God was about to suffer, he was in prayer. You would read in scripture that even before the suffering, that even when the sun was shining bright, he was in prayer. You would read that when God was in suffering, that he was in prayer. We have to maintain a prayer life. And a prayer life cannot only be maintained when something is going on. Our prayer life has to be unceasing. It has to happen all the time. God has to be in our forefront, not only when we need him. Because he's not a genie in a bottle that you just ask three wishes and he pops up and just gives you what you want. God is God and we got to expect, we got to respect his holiness. That the Bible says that God, he is seated high above all. That he is seated high above all. That he is high above heavens. And he is high above the earth. And when God looks down, he looks down from heaven. When he looks down, he looks down to earth. God is in the highest seat, which means that God sees everything. God sees everything. So while suffering, God refines us. By his confirmative truth, God in himself is a reliable source. And when truth is accepted, you will be sanctified. In other words, it is the process of you being complete by God. God would not leave you unfinished. The Bible teaches us that what God has started, the good work in you, he will bring it into completion. He ain't done with you. He's got more for you, but you've got to stay on the wheel as he is the potter and we are the clay. Let him shape you. Let him pour into you. Submit to his authority and his word. Don't try to dry up your own conclusion on what the Bible did not say. Follow the word and the Bible says to take heart. That I know that you would have trouble, but I, God, who sits amongst everyone, who looks down heaven, who looks down the earth, that I, God, have overcome the world. The God that you and I serve is not like the person that is sitting next to you. The Bible says that he holds the whole world in his hands. That the crosses that are in your hands is like the oceans in which you and I stand by that looks like it is infinity. Let's not limit the God that you and I serve. He is a big God. He is a great God. He is a powerful God. He is a wonderful God. He is a holy God. Which is why if God is in you, then who can come against you? Put your marriage in God's hands and see what he can do. Put your trouble in God's hands. Put your suffering in God's hands and see what he can do for you. Is there anybody with a testimony that said, I put my hand, my life in God's hands, and I have seen the miraculous power of our Lord. Jesus in prayer as he was, as he was about to ascend, he's praying for the disciples knowing that they, were, they, that they will be pressed for preaching the word, preaching the gospel. And this is what he says in John 17, 17. Sanctify them. In the truth. Set them apart for your purpose. Make them holy. Your word is truth. Your word is truth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And when God said, let there be, there was. God's word is truth. That every time God speaks, he creates. That every time God speaks, he 
builds. That every time God speaks, he gives. God's word is the truth. God's word. What's his word? God's word is the truth. This is called holy Bible because holy means that it is separated from every other book that you would pick up. His word is the truth. It is the source. It is the strength. It is the wisdom to our soul. His word is the truth. It is the guidance. It is the lamp to my feet. It is what you and I need. His word in us. So when you are asking God to speak, open up his word, read it, and if you want to hear an audible voice, read it out loud, and it will speak right into your soul. Oh, I've shared this before, that some of us have got to get off of Facebook and put our face in the book. Because if you put your face in the book, the Bible says that his word will not come back void. When was the last time you put your face in the book? Last Sunday? When was the last time you meditated on his word day and night? God's word is the truth. God's word is the lamp. Everything. I need you to shut out everything. Everything you need is in his word. Psalm 12, 6 says the words... And promises of the Lord are pure words. In other words, it refines you. Like silver refined in an earthen furnace, purified seven times. Why seven? Because seven is the number of completion. And the confirmative word of truth will pur purify you. His word cleanses us from our sins. Anybody here forgiven? His word completes, conforms, and establishes you as it says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. The purpose of that scripture is because there is an enemy that is trying to come to derail you from your faith. To keep you focused more on your suffering, more on your pain, than to do it by focusing in Jesus. His word completes us. What does God's word do? God's word, write this down, refines us. It refines us. He wants to refine us in our suffering. I'm bringing a closure to this. Refinery is a place where raw materials are transformed into valuable product through a process of purification and separation. In the same way, God refines us through life's challenges and trials, shaping us into vessels of greater spiritual value. That the end of your suffering, you will walk out with greater spiritual value. That you would walk out not the same, but that you would walk out with greater. I need you to shout out greater. I believe that God's confirmative truth will shape you for greater, for more, if you just let him in. What will be greater? Your faith will be greater. Your faith will be greater. That by faith, you can walk knowing that God is in control. Do I see it? No, I don't see it. Our emotions get in the way, so I don't see it. But by faith, I'm going to stand on the promises of God. By faith, I am going to heal. I need to stay on this wheel. I need to let God do what he needs to do. Your faith will be greater. Your character will be greater. That you will exhibit what God asks of us, which is the fruit of the Spirit. Where you would now have a character that is of like our God. A character of wisdom, of virtue, a character of patience, a character of faithfulness and loyal. You know why you can't trust people? Because you've been hurt too many times. You know why you can't trust people? Because someone betrayed you. You've experienced the taste of defeat with disloyalty. 
And if you don't let these pieces go in your life, no matter what relationship you try to go to, your past would always be in your present. And the way that we treat each other, many times we treat God. And God is saying, I am not man that I shall fail you. I know you got cheated on. I know you got beat on. I know you got betrayed. I know you've got pushed. I know you got rejected. I know you got abandoned. I know you're suffering. But I am not man. I am God. I am not just a God, but I am a holy God. I am separated from every other God. I am not like the one that you think. I am great. Greater than he, greater is he that is in who? It is in you than he that is in the world. Stop comparing me to the world. I am not the world. I created the world. I am who you say that I am. Who is God? He is the God of I am. What do you need? God says, I got it. I will purify you. I will help you. I will encourage you. I will love you. I will care for you. I will support you. God is here to tell you, I got your back. I got your back. That is who God is. No matter the reason you may be suffering today, God in you will complete you. I can't explain it, but somehow I can be broken and yet complete at the same time. I don't think some of y'all heard what I just said. I can't explain it, but somehow I can be sad and yet still feel complete. I don't know how to explain it. I can be in the suffering of grief and yet still feel complete. There's something about Jesus in me and me in Jesus. There's something about casting all of your cares upon the Lord. It is a beautiful image of a father and a son who wraps his arms of one that he loves. And if you've given your heart to Jesus, you are considered a son and a daughter of the Most High that sits in the highest place, that looks down from heaven that looks down to the earth and is capable of looking down into your soul. Would you stand to your feet?